and we are live hello homemakers and everyone in the chat or on the replay tonight we welcome wendy coop from savvy brown girl podcast to the show and wendy is a financial coach so she's a pretty savvy brown girl herself. And she's going to give us tips on how we can get our financial acts together in five steps. And I don't know about you, but I could certainly use those five steps to help me get my financial act together. But before we get into that, let me just remind you that this video is brought to you by Apron Diva, pretty and practical. We believe that an apron can be a homemaker's best accessory. So visit us at www.aprondiva.com. And let me just bring that up because I pulled up my website rather than um, the Apron Diva website. So here we go. So here's our website, Apron Diva at aprondiva.com. And the featured apron for tonight. Oh, and look at my darling little niece. But the featured apron for tonight is the Dawn. Once again, we are giving love to bunnies and all things Easter. You can get this for 10% off using the discount code Dawn10 at at checkout. And notice there are three of us here and you can see how the Dawn fits on three different bodies. So please check us out at www.aprondiva.com. All right. Let's give Wendy a warm welcome as we bring her on to the platform. Hey, Wendy. Hi, Denise. And hi, everyone in the chat. If, even if you're not in the chat and you're just watching, hello. I am really looking forward to the gems you're going to drop on us tonight because I tell you what, I can really use some help getting my financial act together. Don't we all? <laughs> I do. do. It's a never ending process, truly. <laughs> All right. And let me just share with people, uh, and I have to talk myself through this, or like you saw just a minute ago, I don't do it just right. So let me just show you guys how you can connect with Wendy. You can connect with her at Savvy Brown Girl. Here she is, Wendy Coop, Savvy Brown Girl, Personal Finance and Entrepreneurship. And this is on the um, particular one is on the Apple Live podcast. However, you can find her at other places. So let me just show you how you can find her at Savvy Brown Girl Podcast. Just do SavvyBrownGirl.com. Mm -hmm. Savvy Brown yep. Girl on uh, Apple, Spotify, and Pandora at SavvyBrownGirl.com. So you can check her out there. Yay. All right. So let me just say, viewers, please hold your questions until the end when Wendy gets through her content, and then we will take questions if there's time. And if you do have a question, be sure to put hashtag Q before the question. That will help the question to stand out. And that way, me and Nikki Blue Skies, who is my assistant, can capture them much easier. So, okay, Wendy, let's get into it. So um, tell us about your homemaking journey, how you and your hubby meet, how long you've been married and that kind of thing. Give us well, some beats. So my husband and I have been married for almost three and a half years, um, though we've been friends for over 20 years because we met in college. Now I'm telling you how old I am here. <laughs> um, but we stayed friends. Um, he went and married some other one, some other woman to my chagrin, but God saw fit to bring us together. So <laughs> three and a half years later, we are living our, I would say our best life down here in Florida. Um, All right. and we are just so blessed to be here, to, to have a nice house to live in. We've got two dogs, two cats and a turtle. <laughs> a turtle. And a turtle. Yes. And 
now I am in charge of this household and menagerie in a way that I've never been in charge before. So, all right. Very interesting homemaking journey. I look forward to hearing more about the turtle and the other parts <laughs> of the menagerie on another time. So we'll have to connect when we get together and we can chat about that. So let's get into the discussion of today, which is about your book, Five Simple Steps to Get Your Act, to Get Your Financial Act Together. Mm -hmm. And your book primarily is budgeting for women, a simple yes. five-step guide to getting your financial act together. Wendy, what made you write this book? And I will say that whereas most of the people who jump on our show are women, we do have a few men occasionally. So I know that your target is women. So let me ask real quick, will these tips you're going to give us work for men? Yes, they, they do work for everyone. But as I have found in looking for books on my own financial journey and just anything else that I want to read about, specificity is important because if I don't speak to women where they are, because we're the ones making the buying decisions by and large, we're the ones actually going to buy the things we've made the decisions about. And marketers know this, advertisers know this. So by and large, if they want to get a purchase done in a household, mm -hmm. they need to get the woman's buy-in so that um, that purchase can actually happen, whether that's a pickup truck or a new water heater. So being empowered to understand what is actually going on in a budget, in a household, um, is one of the reasons why I wrote this book, because I could have written about investing, paying off debt, any of those things. But if you don't have a budget, mm -hmm. it's like telling you to go exercise, but not changing the way you eat. It just really doesn't work. So okay. I started with budgeting and people that I knew, which were other women. Okay. All right. I, I like that. The fact that women have the majority of the buying power, make the majority of the buying decisions. So it does make sense to target women in your book so that we can do that to the best of our ability. And you are right. When you look at so many of the ads and commercials on TV, they do target women. So, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So let me ask you this then. What would be your advice to young homemakers creating a budget for the first time? How should they well, go about it? And then <laughs> how do they know what categories to include? So the first thing, whether you're a young homemaker or not, the first thing you need to understand is that there is no perfect budget, no perfect month, no perfect number of categories, because here's what happens is that you're going to go online and you're going to see examples of budgets and they're mm -hmm. going to have categories and you're going to say, okay, well, some of those categories apply to me. Some of them don't. That is always going to be the case. There is no budget template out there. That's going to be able to account for everything in your life. So my first step for people is always to track your expenses to see where you actually are spending money and create categories based on what you're actually doing, not what someone else thinks that you should be doing. Oh, I like that. I just put that, I'm gonna pop that up in the chat. So there is no budget template to account for every category in your life. And the fact that you, they need to track their spending so they know what they're spending things on so they can create a budget template that works specifically for their family. So mm -hmm. that, responds back to the specificity that you said was so important earlier. I like that. Yes. Because, you know, yes. I, if I'm, if I was doing my budget separate from my husband, well, mm -hmm. there's things he's paying for that I'm not paying for. So there's no need for me to include rent or mortgage in my budget. There's no need for me to include insurance. He's paying for those things. So mm -hmm. if I was creating my own budget, now I've got all this other money to do something with that doesn't fit neatly into somebody else's version of what I should be paying in a budget. Exactly. I like that idea. So I'm just kind of popping up a few um, 
messages from people that are just jumping on and just saying hello as we go ahead because I don't want to stop and and greet them. I'll just say greetings to everyone in the chat. We have with us Wendy Coop from Brown Savvy Girl who's talking about financial planning, in particular, five steps to getting your financial act together. And it is a simple guide for women. Okay, so Wendy, um, moving on then, do you have, um, do we need a miscellaneous category in Yes. That? Oh, yes. yes. Yes, so quick. So tell Oh my me gosh. That that miscellaneous category, or I like to call it stuff I didn't budget for, is a lifesaver. Because, like I said, there's no perfect budget. So therefore, there's always going to be something that you forgot or your family forgot to tell you about. Such as if you've got kids, last minute art projects, bake sales. If you if you bake from home, I don't know, I don't. But <laughs> you know, some people do, and they like it. Um, uh, a gift you forgot for a birthday or a holiday, or there's uh, people in your office are going out uh, because maybe your office is doing that now. Like there mm -hmm. is always something in a given month that you're like, oh, wait, I didn't budget for that. Probably because it's not something that happens very often. Mm -hmm. so that's the first category of, of those unexpected expenses. The second category of things that could potentially ruin your budget are the actual expenses that you pay that don't happen every month, such as cool. paying your car insurance every six months. Or if you've got a business that's making a lot of money, maybe you're paying quarterly taxes, or maybe you're a freelancer and you've got to pay your own taxes, you know, every April because you didn't have it taken because you couldn't have it taken out of your 1099s. Those are all irregular expenses that nobody ever seems to remember. Christmas. Ah, yes. Christmas happens the same time every year. And yet we never set aside the money on a periodic basis to make sure that we have it in time to actually buy those gifts. I think that is absolutely positively correct. We know it's coming every year. I finally got smart and opened a Christmas club at my credit union and had them take out so much each month so that when Christmas mm -hmm. comes, I have a um, little cash of money that I can use to buy Christmas gifts with. But the other budget yeah. busters, the birthday gifts every year, we got the mm -hmm. same grandchildren's birthdays. And every year I forget to budget for them. And then it's like, oh, we've got to send this money off. So yeah, you're yeah. right about that. Let me ask you this then. What are some common mistakes that can definitely sabotage the budget? And before you answer, I want to share with you a story from when I was a young homemaker. And yes, folks, I was actually a young homemaker <laughs> at one time in my life. And I didn't learn how to write checks. I didn't learn how to balance the checkbook. I didn't learn any of that stuff from home. First time I wrote a check was when I went to college and we had to get a checking account for our financial aid and all that kind of stuff. So when we got married and we're trying to raise a family and that kind of thing, I struggled with balancing the checkbook. And then one of the big problems was the husband and I were both writing checks from the same checkbook. I'd have the checkbook with me and I'd write checks. He'd get a check out of the box of checks that we kept in a drawer somewhere in the house if I was gone with the checkbook. And then he would write it down in the top of the checkbook box. Now, I don't look in that box until I'm getting out another pack of checks. Mm -hmm. So it's like our checking account was always overdrawn. Our mm -hmm. budget was always, a, well, our non-existent budget was always a mess. And I remember one day, here I am, a young mom, I'm a college graduate, so I'm a smart person. You know, I've been to college and I've got a degree. I'm working as a nurse and I'm managing people's lives. And I'm sitting in the bank sobbing because our checking account was $100 overdrawn. Yeah. Now, today, $100 is not a whole lot of money to some people. But in 1972, $100 was a lot of money, particularly when you had two or three littles and you're trying to put food on the table and pay for cheerleading and soccer and all the stuff they were doing. Mm -hmm. I was literally sobbing in the bank trying to figure out what am I doing wrong? So yeah. what is your suggestion? So there's a few things that could help. And this is totally going to be dependent on where you and your spouse are and who's handling the money and, you know, who 
who's more hands off. So you could have three accounts, one joint and then two separate because cool. what you would do is take the joint account and put the money in that's just for the bills and whoever's responsible for paying the bills will pay the bills. Mm -hmm. And then in the separate accounts, you have the money that you're going to spend on whatever you're going to spend the money on. So if my husband's like, I want to buy office snacks. Okay. Well, that's not in the, <laughs> that's not in the food budget. Uh, you take that out of your, your money and he'll be like, Oh, do I have to? And I'm like, yeah, cause it's not in the food budget. It's not on the list, you know, or if he wants to go and, or maybe I want to buy movie tickets, or maybe I want to do something that he's just not into. Mm -hmm. That's, that's like your fun money or your entertainment money. You can keep that separate if you want. So that's just one way to do it. Another way to do it is find a way to, um, there's an app called Honeydew. I haven't used it. But my understanding is the app is designed for couples so that you can share those budgeting expenses and share as much information as you want. Don't share other things if you don't want. Mm -hmm. And so that's a way in a, a modern way to avoid the checkbook issue because I don't write checks anymore. I, I think I have some maybe somewhere. <laughs> I don't I don't even think they have my married name on it. It's been so long since I wrote a check. I got so. checks. <laughs> I got checks and I actually wrote one today. I wrote one to my beautician because she doesn't do cards. She doesn't take bank cards. Oh. She takes cash and checks only. So I write a check oh, every wow. week for that. And there's a couple other things that I write checks for, but most of the time I just swipe my card. When I got my pedicure yesterday, I tapped my card. I didn't even, <laughs> I, I didn't use cash. I didn't insert the card or anything. Just tap to pay. And I was good to go. Okay. Well, see, you're one of those millennials. You're right there on the end of those millennials. So you guys do that. I'm still being pulled kicking and screaming into the 22nd century. So is my husband. Um, he, he, Apple pay is a mystery to him. <laughs> okay. All right. So then let me uh, just remind people that we've got Wendy Coop from Brown Savvy Girl who is talking to us about our finances and she's going to give us five a five-step guide to getting our financial act together and just looking at a few things and again we're not going to take questions until the end but i just just wanted to pop up a few things Wendy, so that you can see what people are thinking is that budgets are so hard and the variable expenses are really tough mm -hmm. and then uh d at d lovely life says so many new things to budget nowadays and she is one who, her name is Denise, so she's a named twin, but yes. she is a full-time caretaker for her mom who had a mm -hmm. huge stroke. And so her mom is living with her and then she's helping to manage that. And um, let's see. Oh, Danita mentioned science fair materials. <laughs> yeah. And Debbie Jo said she's been trying to do a no spin month for the last four months. This is her fifth month trying to do it. So now mm -hmm. she feels like she's probably doing better at a low spin than a no spin. And I'm trying to do yeah. a low spin this month as well. Yeah, I've I have failed at many a no spin challenge. So um, don't feel bad because sometimes we just have to, instead of doing a month, maybe just do a day or like three days or try a weekend <laughs> so yeah. that we can get into that, that really good habit of preparing for a no spend challenge. The, the ladies, one of the ladies at the frugal friends podcast, uh, Jen Smith, mm -hmm. she has a book called the no spend challenge guide. And I've been reading that and she's got a ton of helpful tips in there on how to prepare and execute a no spend challenge. Oh, I think I'll have to check that out. Blue Skies, can you write that in the chat? Can you tell it again and Blue Skies can put it in the chat for us? So the book is called The No Spend Challenge Guide, and it's by Jen Smith of Frugal Friends Podcast. And her blog is Modern Frugality. Modern Frugality. Okay, so if Blue Skies can get that in there, hopefully she's paying attention because she's um, also interacting with our guests in the chat, too, that she does yeah. that. So. And then Michelle at My Everyday Wife Life says she bought a budget journal. Yes. And then, uh, Dee says her husband hasn't seen their bank account in months. He just hands her the receipts. You know, I will tell you guys, you guys will laugh at this, but I didn't know my husband could write a check. 
other than, <laughs> you know, when we were younger and he was doing things the wrong way. And uh, I managed the budget. I wrote all the checks, paid all the bills, didn't always do a good job of it. And then um, a few years back, I went through an overwhelming depression that I was just so incapacitated. I just couldn't do anything. I couldn't manage the budget. I couldn't do any of that. He took over beautifully. He automated all the bills, got them all online. Everything is paid. And I'm like, well, who knew? That's so, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm real pleased with that. Uh, but Kim says her husband doesn't know what a budget is. He just okays his expenses or tell him not whatever is going on. <laughs> and uh, Michelle said hers hasn't seen an account in years. So yeah, I, I get it. Yeah, I get mm -hmm. it. Like I said, though, mine does it all now. I'm yeah. beginning to help a little bit more now. But mm -hmm. uh, he had done it for like the last three or four years. And I'm like, wow, who knew? All right. Yeah. So, and then here's where Mickey Blue Skies put in the information, the No Spin Challenge Guide by Jen Smith. Okay, so now I'm going to get down to the nitty gritty. Uh-oh. <laughs> so what I've heard a lot of people talk, particularly financial experts, talk about a zero-based budget. Mm -hmm. So, and I want this to be clear for our viewers. So what is a zero-based budget? So that's a really good question because there are multiple types of budgets like if you thought just doing a budget was hard enough just knowing that there's multiple types of budgets is just going to blow your mind um but this zero based budget is if if you're familiar with dave ramsey um this is this is his go-to budget um so he's essentially made it popular again and mm. all it means is that every dollar in your budget has a place to go. So at the end, at the bottom, it's going to zero out because either it's gone to an expense or it's gone to savings or it's gone to pay off debt or whatever it is you have built in your budget. There's no money just hanging out with no home. <laughs> like everything, every, every, every dollar has a purpose. I like that idea. Every dollar has a purpose. So, okay, then now let's look at something that I know you like, and that is a value-based budget. So yes. what is a value-based budget? And uh, tell us why you believe that one is best. So in order for me to speak about the value-based budget, let me back up to another type of budget called the 50-30-20 budget. Okay. And this budget was made popular by Senator Elizabeth Warren back when she was a Harvard law professor. Um, she wrote a book, I forget the name of the book, but um, in it, she popularized this type of budget. And it simply means that 50% of your take-home pay would go to needs, 30% to wants, and then the remaining 20% to whatever your financial goals are, maybe paying off debt or saving for retirement. Now, that does not work for everybody. Because it doesn't account for somebody who lives in, say, New York City, and that's a higher cost of living versus somebody who's living in Kansas City, <laughs> where I'm sure it's much less expensive mm -hmm. to live. So to me, these seem like arbitrary percentages, um, but they can be helpful for somebody just getting started. But what I like about the value-based budget is it allocates money to the things you value most. So it doesn't say don't ever eat out because maybe you value that time with your family. Maybe you value the experience of eating out. So if that's something you value, or maybe it's buying books, um, mm -hmm. physical books, or maybe it's listening to audiobooks. I'm not telling you to give those up and eliminate those from your budget. I'm saying because you value them, work them into your budget in a sustainable way so that you're not going broke doing that activity but you still get the benefit of it without wrecking your budget. I like that again. I, I like that. So you talk about working those things that are important to you into your budget in a way that is sustainable. Mm -hmm. That is just genius. And it just makes so much sense. I, I guess when I first started thinking about budgets, I looked at budgets as being something that was very rigid and just mm -hmm. something that I had to do and nothing that was any. Fun. Right. And that's, that's the thing too. It's like, 
before I started budgeting, and I mentioned this in the book, so before I started budgeting, I thought, oh my gosh, it's the B word. It's going to tell me what I can't do, what I can't spend money on. And I had all these negative associations with the budget. And then I sat down and actually wrote out what I was spending money on, where my money needed to go, where I wanted it to go. And I realized I had more money than I thought. I got a raise just by writing down my numbers. Okay. I like that idea. So now I want to pull up um, your, well, tell us about your, um, your book, the five easy steps. I was going to try to, well, before we get into that, one other question. Mm -hmm. One of the things that Dave Ramsey has also made popular again is the envelope system. So let's uh -huh. talk about that real quick. And then while you're talking about that, I'm going to find the link for your book that I did have up here, but I must have closed it because I can't find it now. <laughs> okay. So the envelope system, for those of you who don't know, um, also made popular, again, like Denise said, by Dave Ramsey, is a system of budgeting where instead of using your debit card or your credit card, you're actually taking the money out of the bank. Well, he uses cash envelopes. So you're taking the money out of the bank and divvying them up um, into actual physical envelopes. So you're stuffing those envelopes with cash. So if your grocery budget is $600 for the month, you're putting $600 in your grocery envelope. And then when the money's gone, it is gone. Um, theoretically, you don't move money from one envelope to another, but I've seen financial coaches say that it's okay. I don't like carrying cash, so I don't have cash envelopes. So what I use instead is a software called YNAB. You need a budget. So at YNAB.com, it's not free. I, I should say that it's not free. Um, you can pay monthly or you pay yearly, but it helps you set up the budget and essentially gives you digital envelopes. So you still give your money a home but you're just doing it digitally so that you know, okay, I have this much money left to allocate. Does it go to um, a credit card or does it go to um, groceries? Um, I need money for this bill by this date. And it just helps you better keep track of it in a way that I've not seen before in any kind of budgeting software. So, and there's other apps that are specifically for digital envelopes or that will help you manage your cash envelopes. I'm sure Dave Ramsey has one too, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but it's, it's something you can do with just plain office envelopes, or you can get fancy and buy stuff on Amazon or, uh, his daughter, Rachel Cruz has a, a fancy, I think it's a leather wallet with four envelopes inside. And it's like $60 or something. So oh like, there's levels of fanciness and sophistication to this that you probably don't need at first. Um, but that's really all the envelope system is. Um, it's a way to keep you accountable, which if you've been spending money like a drunken sailor, yeah, start uh. with some envelopes um, and, and definitely rein your spending under control. Um, it's not something you're going to have to do forever, I don't think, um, but it is good to help rain in the spending. So, um, to get you back into a state where you feel more in control of where your money is going. Oh, that sounds really good. So I'm trying to find your link and I'm having a little trouble pulling it back up just now. So I'm going to just, um, Oh, to the book. Yeah. To the book. I will put it in the private chat. Okay. And then you can pull the link from okay. there. Okay, that'll be great because I did have it and I closed it out and then I can't <laughs> to find, it, find it again. So, okay. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. So, I like the idea of the envelope system and I did mm -hmm. buy like one of those little wallets off Amazon so that I could put the cash and stuff like that in it because mm -hmm. I'm trying to limit my grocery shopping because I used to just spend way too much. So I'm really trying to work on that. So we'll see. If yes. That and, and see, that's another thing too, is that um, cause there's a chapter in the book that talks about fixed versus variable expenses. Mm -hmm. And while we all have to eat, 
groceries is a variable expense. And a lot of people spend time querying other people. They're saying, well, what's, what's uh, your family spending on, on uh, food in a given month? But their average is just that. It's their average. Maybe they, it's two parents and two teenagers and the teenagers play sports and they eat a lot of food. Mm -hmm. you know, they're going to have a, quite a different grocery bill than the couple with, uh, there you go, there's my book, than the couple with um, three children under six, you know, or me and my husband who, you know, we don't often have people over. So usually the food is just for us. So understand that your grocery budget, your average is just your average. Um, you could you could Google national averages, you could Google state averages, um, but they don't account for your dietary needs, your preferences, and the specific makeup of your family. Right. And I do have the link to the book in the description box below of this um, live stream. But like I said, I, I let myself get kicked out. And so I was unable to get it back. All right. So now let me ask you then for action step number one in your book. And in, in in what it talks about getting your financial act together is to gather your papers. That, that's mm -hmm. action step number one. Tell us what that means, to gather your papers. So what that means is for someone who've, who's never budgeted before or has always been challenged by budget, or now there's a different season of life that you're in, like mm -hmm. maybe now you're retired or you're coming out of the workforce and you're the stay at home parent, or your kids are now gone and it's just you and your spouse. Uh, for whatever reason, we need to take full account of our spending, hopefully over the last 30 days, mm -hmm. um, longer if you can stand looking at your numbers, but at least the last 30 days so you can identify your habits, your spending patterns, and where you actually have money. How much do you have in retirement, if any? How much debt do you have? Because a lot of people don't want to know how much debt they have. What is the state of your student loans? Um, are you behind on bills? These are all things that are going to help you in step two, which is actually building the budget, because now you have a better sense of not only what you're spending, but where your money needs to go to have the biggest impact on your financial future. Okay. So I like that. So then step number one is to gather the paper so that you know what's going on. And when you say gather the paper, that's a loose term. It could be actual gathering physical papers like we do when we yep. get ready for taxes, or it could be just going through your bank account and looking at the various categories and things like right. that. Yeah. Because I don't get paper statements. So I, yep. You know, I would just be looking through whatever I have um, online for um, my bank or for my retirement accounts or for wherever it is that I'm spending money. If money's coming out or going in, mm -hmm. that's where you need to look for your information. Okay. So um, one other question then. So you talked about step number two is to actually build the budget. How do mm -hmm. we go about doing that? Ah, yes. So I talk about a few different things in that chapter, such as where you're going to build the budget um, in addition to how, and then different types of income scenarios, such as you have variable income. <laughs> what do you do there? So um, what's important to understand is that you're going to create this budget in a place that is easily sustainable by you. So that could be pen and paper. That could be accounting graph paper. I used to use that because I had extra. Um, that could be a spreadsheet. That could be in one of the apps. Whatever works for you and you're actually going to go back and look at is where you're going to build that budget. But all it is in its most simple terms is a list of income and expenses and the difference between the two. And hopefully when you get the difference, it is uh, zero or more. Okay. Not negative. <laughs> now, I just want to make sure I understand when we talk about how to build that budget, you're going to gather the information that you need. And it could mm -hmm. be as simple as using a notebook and you're making a list of what your income is and what mm -hmm. your expenses are. And hopefully your expenses are less than what's coming in. You don't want it going out the back door. Mm -hmm. than it's coming in the front door. 
So but make those list of expenses and then just look at it that way. You can yes. use some apps that are available, which you've mentioned a couple, but you don't have to. You can be old school like me and try and do a pencil and paper. Yeah. I mean, I have also used Google Sheets um, and I literally just have and you'll see this in the book. There's one column that says income, one column that says expenses and then a third column that shows the difference. <laughs> that is that is it. Nothing okay. fancy about this. Now, my husband, he'll put on a spreadsheet that is way more complicated than I care to make. Mm -hmm. So he can have that. <laughs> I I choose to keep it digital and keep it simple um, also by using the apps because who wants to pull out Google Sheets on their phone? Like nobody. Nobody wants to do that. Okay. So then backing up again, you had mentioned that there were some banking apps that you recommend to help with the budgeting process. Now, I'm not one who wants to go on and look at any apps. I might want to go to the bank and look mm -hmm. at my actual statement and get out my pencil and paper, but I'm just a little bit leery about using some of these different apps. But then again, I'm old school. So for these people today who are more a savvy, more astute than mm -hmm. I might be, what were those apps again that you recommend? You can use mint.com, uh, which is free. Uh, Dave Ramsey has one called Every Dollar. And then my favorite is YNAB. You need a budget. Oh, you need a budget. I've heard of that. Okay. So let's just back up for a second then and um, and just kind of re-mention what made you passionate about budgeting and sharing it with others. And then they yep. also want to know, what was your experience in upbringing where money was concerned? And I've learned yes. recently that your money family does make a difference in how you view money today. Absolutely. So that that is a great question. Um, I don't know if you say your name, Kamika, or not, but great question. Happy to answer it. So I did not learn about money when I was growing up. Um, we We weren't really poor, but we weren't wealthy either. And in fact, I didn't really notice the difference between like really the classes of people until I went to a, a fancy all girls boarding school on scholarship. Um, and that's when I learned about J. Crew and Eddie Bauer and all these things like people had specific shoes for running. And I was like, what? That's a thing. I didn't know that, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I started to see these differences in income, but I didn't think much of it. Um, because I always felt like I had enough, but I didn't know what I didn't know. So I graduate from high school. I go off to the United States Naval Academy and I actually end up with about $23,000 worth of loans, which they call career starter loans because, Hey, we're going to be Naval officers. We'll have the steady paycheck to pay these back. But for the life of me, I still don't know why they thought we needed 23 thousand uh, dollars worth of loans at a very, very low percentage rate. Um, because even though we needed to buy uniforms for graduation, most of us just ended up buying new computers and cars. Like that's what we did with our money. Um, because we didn't get any education on what the best use of this money was for. It was just, this is what you do. Mm -hmm. Then later on, I went to another university in the University of Baltimore um, after I got out of the Navy. And that's where I got my business degree. And I took out student loans because that's what you do. I didn't, again, didn't know what I didn't know. I just knew that people were getting refunds. And I was like, oh, I need extra money. Well, then I'll just take out this loan and live off the refund. Looking back, that was a crazy, mm -hmm. irrational thing to do. But it was what you did in the early, like mid 2000s, like mid aughts. Um, hence the crisis we're in today. So when I was finishing my time at the University of Baltimore, I actually got a job as a business and computer teacher at a high school, an all girls high school at that. And I was able to teach both business management and financial management. So this was something I was helping uh, high school girls with that I didn't get very much of when I was younger. And as I learned more and more and more about money, and I started thinking about the conversations that didn't happen when I was younger and what I didn't know and the crazy things I did with money because I didn't know. And I was like, man, 
this has to, this has to stop. But like I said earlier, I could have written about a number of personal finance things. I could have written a much larger book that mm -hmm. covered all the topics, but what was the least that you needed to know to get started? Get started. To budget, to get control of your money first so that it doesn't control you because until you get that under control, it doesn't matter. Investing doesn't matter. Paying off debt doesn't matter. Making more money doesn't matter mm -hmm. because there's a lot of businesses out there where their finances are trash because they don't know how to manage their business finances because they don't know how to manage their personal finance. Okay. I like that. So while I'm looking for the next question, there's a couple in here and I'll find it and pop it up there. Let me just ask you this one. I'm a retiree and it's just me and the hubby here. However, mm -hmm. many of my viewers are young homemakers or homemakers that are in the middle. So some have the littles and some have the teens, that mm -hmm. kind of thing. And they need to build a budget. What advice would you give to them? So the first thing I would do is if at all possible, get everyone in the family bought into the idea that this budget is a spending plan. This is how we're going to spend our money each month and that it's not a punishment. It's not a, a bad thing. It's not something we're going to lord over your head. This is just the way that we're going to use to accomplish our financial goals, whether that's paying for sports or going on vacation or paying off debt or saving for retirement. So this budget that you create, the spending plan is going to be based entirely on your family structure and your situation. Maybe you're caring for aging parents and you need to budget extra for some categories for that. So that's why I emphasize that there's no perfect budget because mm -hmm. the important thing is to get started and to get as much buy-in as possible because you're going to stumble a few after a few, you know over a few months because you're just getting your 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 budgeting legs under you so to speak. So Oops. having people understand in the household what's going on and why it's important you know is is really the best thing but i know that's not everybody's situation you know and i think that is so important like my daughter they will have family meetings about different things and mm -hmm. so that's her and the hubby and the and the two kids who are teenagers we didn't do that because we didn't see that example before so i'm surprised mm -hmm. that she even does that but she's got some pretty good um, practices that she put in her family that she certainly didn't learn from us because I didn't know to do some of those things. But that's such a, such a good idea to have to get the family buy-in, particularly when you need to change something. Got a question here from Gail Luker, and mm -hmm. she it wants to know about automatic debit. And that's what my husband ended up doing was putting many of our bills on automatic debit. Can you talk mm -hmm. a little bit about that? Okay, so Gail, Gail says that she is scared someone will hit the wrong key in, in debit may account. Oh, that there may be some error and mm -hmm. it's going to totally wreck your, okay. All right, Gail, I got you because, um, in the beginning, you're probably not going to be auto debiting too many things from your account to pay your bills from the budget until you've gotten a good sense of what money is available in your account account. Mm -hmm and when it's there. So the likelihood of that happening where there's a mistake by say the bank, because you're putting, see the thing with automatic debits and withdrawals is you're the one putting in the information, right? So you're going to the bank website or you're going to the utility company website and you're putting in the information. Now it's totally up to you if you want to do an automatic bill pay, maybe that automatic bill pay will save you money. But there's a lot of bills I do not put on automatic um, at this point, not because I'm scared, but just because that's just that's just the way I prefer it. Mm -hmm. So if you really don't feel comfortable doing an automatic bill pay or an automatic withdrawal, it's fine. You don't have to do it, but make sure that you schedule time um, when you're doing your regular budgeting to make sure you go in and pay those bills manually before the due date. Okay. Okay. That makes perfect sense. So when you pay them manually, either you're going to click, 
in the keyboard to pay the bill on that date or you're going to write a check and mail it in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right. So here's Heather Smether and she says, excellent point, Wendy. She's got three teens and her hubby gives them accounts with a loadable card and it's been, and it has been interesting how they save budget and spend. Yes. Reloadable debit cards are awesome because it's, because it's a good tool to be able to create some financial independence for, um, for your kids, but also allow them the freedom to use the money the way they see fit and to experience the consequences, mm -hmm. good or bad, of those decisions. And then Heather is also thanking you for your service. Thank you, Heather. Yeah. And then what would what would you recommend not having on automatic debit? Oh, um, <laughs> that is anything. One of the things I do not put on automatic debit is uh, like our water and electricity bill because it's not the same. It's not the same every month. And in here in Florida, we could potentially use a lot of water um, one month versus another month. And so I don't feel comfortable at this point doing that because I haven't been in this house long enough to know what's average. Um, because I'll tell you our second month here, we had a $300 water bill. And then the next month it went down oh. to $67. So, <laughs> um, that's, that's a very, very wide range. So the, the variable bills like that, the utility bills, I might, I wouldn't do, but if your phone bill is the same every month, your, your cable bill, your Netflix, those are the same every month. They're coming out the same time every month. Um, just go ahead and put those on automatic so you don't have to worry about it because the less you have to worry about, the more you can enjoy yourself doing other things. Okay. Um, somebody is saying something here about homes and buying a house, house bubble about to pop the way to buy a house. What do you know about that? Or do you? That is not my area of expertise. Okay. Um, that I just know that, um, there's a lot of experts saying that it's not going to be like 2008 and that the system, that the, the housing market, the way it is, is fundamentally different. Mm -hmm. So yes, interest rates have gone up. But it's a if, if it's the right time for you to buy a house, regardless of what the interest rates are doing, then buy the house. Don't try to time the market because there's never a perfect time to really do anything. You just have to do what's best for your family at that moment. OK, I like that idea. Best for your family at that moment. Here's a question from Danita. And she says that she uses the payment system, the payment system for her credit card and had it due on the due date. And it, it didn't go through until one day after and she got hit with a late payment. Should she call the credit card company and complain or is it her fault? I would call. And then when you call, you ask them, hey, is this normal? So if I, if I send my payment on the due date, is it credited that day or is it credited later? Because if they tell you it's going to be credited later, then you're just going to have to adjust the way you pay the bills so that it's built so that it's paid a day or two ahead. And I'll give you an example. I have a credit card where um, I went in today to pay it. It was due today. But I also knew that payments made before 1159 p.m. would be credited today. Even though I may not see the money out of my bank account today, I know it's getting credited in my account on a certain day. Okay. Okay. And then um, Michelle says most banks have auto bill pay and have heard to auto bill pay through your bank rather than through a, like the electric company taking it out of your account each month. Um, I still prefer to go with each provider. Um, that way... It, because each provider has their own different system. So let's say um, your you, oh. your power company uh, charges a fee for something that if you went through the bank, you sometimes banks charge fees for bill pay when you just could just go straight to the provider and do it yourself. Um, and doing it through the bank doesn't always guarantee your bill is going to get paid on time either. So mm -hmm. again, just like the credit card issue, you have to know what is due when and still keep on top of it, regardless of where you set the automatic pay. 
Okay. And sounds like your husband wants to answer one of the questions that, that was about buying the house. He says he can talk <laughs> to that. So Eric, um, you pop your, I mean, what do you want it to do? Do you want him to just pop his? his yeah, put it, go there? ahead, sweetie, put it in the chat. Um, because I, I, I know that he bought this house back in 2015 when this neighborhood was still under development. So I'm interested in what he's going to say, to be honest with you. Okay. All right. Well, Eric, go ahead and pop it in the chat and we're looking forward to what you have to say. Okay. Okay. So I good to have the hubby on to support. Yay. Yes, it is. It is. He's probably furiously typing right now. So Danita said she had scheduled the payment to be paid on the 26th to be paid on the first and it went through on the second. So she'll call tomorrow because she doesn't want it to ding her credit score. Yeah, that right. sometimes happens. Yes. And the other thing to remember is, is that you, if you've got a solid payment history and this is like the first time you've ever been late, they're probably going to forgive that late fee and probably take it off your credit because they don't want to lose you as a customer. They don't want to lose your money. And so I would definitely press into that um, because that just, that doesn't sound right. Okay. So Eric says things were a bit different in 2015. Interest rates were almost as low as they would be. Right. So again, yes, interest rates have gone up this year, but there's also, you know, a lot of people have house fever because they feel like that's the thing they're supposed to do. They're supposed to buy a house, mm -hmm. but they're not really taking into account their full economic situation. So do they have enough money set aside for potential home repairs? Do they have money for the home inspection to pay the closing costs? Things like that. It's not just about, can you afford the mortgage? It's mm -hmm. about, can you afford to keep up the house? Just like when you buy a car, it's not about whether or not you can afford the car payment every month, but can you keep the car um, maintained and pay insurance and things like that? Okay. I, I like that. That was, that was huge. So Linda says that she agrees with your point on communicating the budget and related topics with those in the household is help them to understand each other and eliminate misunderstandings. Yes. I can just see where that would be so important. Yeah. And so one of the things I talked about in the book is what do you do when your spouse doesn't want to do the budget with you? Doesn't want to talk about money, gets upset. Like, there could be a lot of things going on that happened in their past, like kind of money trauma um, or just things that they don't understand um, or maybe things they're not ready to share. Mm -hmm. So here's what I would do. I would start a budget with the money you can control. So if you've got your own job or your own business, you've got money coming in or you've agreed to get a certain amount of money out of the total household income, start by budgeting that money to show your spouse what's possible and then have a 20 minute conversation. Like we don't have to talk about money for an hour. We're going to talk about it for 20 minutes and what doesn't get talked about in 20 minutes is done. It just has to wait till next time, have some food, have some wine, make it comfortable. I don't know, have popcorn, whatever you <laughs> do, try to make it not intimidating because there's usually going to be somebody who loves the money and then somebody who just doesn't. And the person who doesn't, doesn't want to get beat over the head with the budget all the time. Just create the budget, show it to them. Hey, do you have anything you want to say about that? You have to say something about it. You can't just nod your head and then move on with your life. Okay. Somebody made a comment. I think it was D about gas and electricity in California was raised dramatically from the usual $200 to $300 to $480. And these type of budget categories are throwing her off big time. So yeah. who knew we were going to have a war that would create all kinds of havoc in mm -hmm. our everyday life? And this gas and electric bill is probably related to some of that. So do you have any suggestions for Dee on how to manage this sudden increase in necessities? So, there's a couple of things. The first thing is 
Um, is there something else in the budget where you can decrease temporarily so that you have the extra money to pay that utility bill? Um, and the second thing is, is going forward, try to budget for the most or for the upper average of that. So if your upper average is $480 and you're planning out May's budget, um, if it comes in under that, great. If it's about 480, great. You, you've planned for that. Um, but just don't plan for the 200 mm -hmm. when it could be more than twice that. And that was, that was the thing with this water bill. So I, I'm the one who pays the water bill. And I said, Hey, if, if it's a $300 water bill again, I'm not paying that entire amount. We are going to have to split it, but under a certain amount, no problem. I can budget for that and take care of it. But beyond that, it's just going to have to be a, a, a split of some sort. Um, and that's mainly because my husband makes more money than I do. Okay. That makes sense. All right. So, um, Eric popped in again. If you aren't an SVCM, which I'm not sure what that is, or a service vet, member. Oh, a service member or a vet. There are ways to finance the 20% down, but the main thing is that it will come down to what you can afford as a monthly payment. Yeah. And that's one of the things that, that I think people don't often think about when they're going into a home, as you pointed out, not only is it the monthly house note, but then you've also got the insurance is either paid monthly, quarterly, or uh, annually. You've also got any maintenance on the home. You've also got, um, OA fees. Yeah. You might have homeowner organization fees or fees that were related to keeping the grass cut and keeping the mm -hmm. chemicals on the grass to keep weeds down and all other kinds of things like that, that go into yeah. Maintaining a home just like buying a car. Okay. So okay. I mean, even even something simple as we moved out of a one bedroom apartment into a house with two and a half bathrooms. So in two floors. So now I feel like I've got to keep duplicates of things on each floor so that I can, you know, not drive myself crazy saying, oh, where did I set this bottle of cleaner this time? Oh, we're just going to keep one in each bathroom just to make it easier for me. Stuff I didn't have to think about before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I recommend for my young homemakers and my uh, mature homemakers and even seasoned ones to have a cleaning caddy on each floor. You don't want to be dragging the cleaning caddy up and down the stairs. So uh -uh. have one upstairs and one downstairs. And the one upstairs can have everything you need for the upstairs and you can move it around to whatever rooms and then put it back in whatever is living space in. But yeah, I, I should have watched your channel before I <laughs> moved in because I, I just, I didn't know. Yeah. Okay. So Eric's got things in here too about avoiding subprimes. And if that's all you can qualify for, if the kind of payments in your market are more than 20% of your income, it's better to rent and then raise your credit. Yeah, you do want to avoid that. Um, and yeah, then Eric, Eric's going to keep going in the chat. So you don't, you don't have to put up all his comments. He's just going to okay. drain down everything. And then Michelle says they were able to do a VA loan on their first house, no money down. So take mm -hmm. advantage of that if you can. So, yes. Uh, yeah. So, okay. Oh my, six oh nine a gallon of gas right now. I think oh a D is in California. If gallon is gas is six oh nine. Ours is down to three eighty five, three three ninety nine right now. So we're at four oh nine right around my house, but uh bike, maybe some public transportation. I don't know. I, I did bikes in public transportation for years when I lived in Baltimore City. Um but Last time I, I saw high gas prices, like most of us, was after Katrina. And I was delivering pizza after Katrina. So that in an SUV. So, oh. yeah, I was paying for gas. <laughs> All right. So, um, Wendy, let's talk about the five tips that you have to homemakers to consider as they strive to keep their budgets on track. So what are okay. your five tips? And you said you struggled with one of those today. Yes. So my first tip, my always go-to first tip, sorry, Eric, is to not take your spouse shopping with you. <laughs> not to the grocery store anyway, because someone will always want something that's not on the list and not in the budget. 
and we'll call it office snacks <laughs> or, you know, or something, whatever, whatever your spouse happens to do. But that's, um, I've learned that the hard way, but you know, last night I just wanted company going to the store. So I said, come on, Eric, let's go to the store. And when I was unloading the basket, I was like, where did these sunflower seeds come from? Where did this come from? And he's like, office snacks. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is, can you take something healthier? Like we were just in produce. <laughs> And look, so, there's the super chat. Oh my goodness. Yay. I am just so surprised. Thank you, Janita, so much. I appreciate that. We don't get many super chats over here. So I really, really appreciate that. And Wendy, you're definitely bringing the value today. So thank you so yes. much for that. All right. So that, okay. yeah, so that's my first tip is don't take your spouse to the store with you. Um, second tip is there is still value in warehouse clubs like Sam's Club, Costco's, and BJ's. But don't buy everything there. You have to be strategic about what you purchase. So typically for us, that will only be toilet paper, paper towels, um, not necessarily cleaning supplies because the cleaning supplies that I prefer aren't sold in those warehouse stores. And then other than those paper products, we might get um, actual groceries like sodas would be cheaper or maybe the meat is cheaper or something like that. Mm -hmm. But that also comes from understanding if I, if I went down the street to Publix versus going to Sam's Club, how much would this cost me? Mm -hmm. Now, my husband doesn't know these things, which is also why he doesn't get to go shopping. But Whoever is the one doing the shopping probably knows where it's cheaper to get the food or at least where to find the information to know if it's cheaper to go to Publix or Winn-Dixie or Sam's Club. So okay. don't overlook the, the warehouse clubs that look when everybody was trying to get toilet paper. I always got my toilet paper from Sam's Club. Um, <laughs> OK. Um, and, and it lasts us for a, a long time because there's only two of us. But is the cost per unit is much lower than if I just popped into Target or or into Publix. Don't buy your toilet paper from the grocery store, by the way. That's like the most expensive way to do that. Oh, that's usually where I get my, well, I usually go to Target. Like I would go on my errand day, I would get my mm -hmm. hair done, go to the post office, the post office, then I would go to Target and pick up toilet paper, uh, paper towels, napkins, things like that. Yeah, Target, Walmart, those stores are fine. But when you get into like a grocery store, um, it, it tends to be more expensive. Okay. So what was tip number three? And this one might be a little challenging. Okay. So tip number three is to reduce your meat consumption. Now I'm telling you this, I understand food costs are going up. So I would have told you this six months ago because meat, poultry, and seafood are expensive. Mm -hmm. They, they just are. And now they're more expensive. I mean, somebody was talking about a bacon shortage. Like, come on, not bacon, yes. but bacon. Okay. Like people love bacon. So if you reduce your meat consumption, even if it's just once a week, like meatless Mondays, you're going to save money on your grocery bill. Um, and probably have healthier food. <laughs> um, I tend to lean towards vegetarian. Um, I cook a lot of plant-based meals, but um, I still eat meat every now and then. But again, it's expensive. You can look for the reduced priced meat if you want to, if you want to go looking that hard. Um, Eric likes to do that. But um, consciously reducing your meat consumption uh, has proven not only good for your health, but also good for the planet. Okay. And then D at D Lovely Life is saying this is a great topic. For I mean, especially now, loving all the helpful info. So Wendy, you are definitely bringing the value. So what was your fourth tip? And, uh, and you fourth, might have alluded to it earlier, but again, that fourth tip right now. Yeah. So the fourth tip, again, is not to think that there's a perfect budget. There is no perfect budget for everyone. There's no perfect budget for you. There's just an average of what you do and what you're going to do this month. So April's not going to look like May and it's not going to look like June and July and August either, especially if you've got kids and they're out of school. 
for the summer and you want to go on vacation, those expenses are different. What you're doing is different. So if you go into each month understanding that, then you're not going to hold yourself to this impossible, perfect standard that doesn't exist because nobody gets it right all the time. Okay. I like that. And then what was that last tip that I found to be very interesting? The last tip is that sometimes doing it yourself is more expensive than just buying something pre-made. And by that, I mean things like cleaners, detergents, toothpaste. There's a, like, I'm not a craft person, I'll admit. Um, and there are times when making something yourself can be more beneficial, but you also have to take into account the cost of the materials and the cost of the time it takes to make something. So for example, I could buy sour cream from the store or I could make sour cream from cashews. Mm -hmm. If I've already got the cashews, okay, we'll just make a small batch of sour cream and use up what I have. But if I buy it from the store, what's the cost? Uh, am I buying too much? Uh, how long is it going to be before we use it all? These are all things to consider whether or not you should do it yourself or whether you should buy it. Also with regards to services, um, is your time worth more than it would take the lawn guy to come and spray and, and actually cut your, cut your grass? Or is this something you want to do because it's like therapeutic for you? It's cathartic. If that's the case, keep cutting the grass. If not, maybe your time is better spent doing something else. Okay. And sounds like Dee's agreeing with you. Finally, someone agrees with her. And I don't know if it's on the Meatless Monday or if it's on the DIY. So Dee, you're going to have to let us know which one of those are you agreeing with her on. The fact that the DIY is not always the best option or the meatless meals. And I see my husband has dropped some bacon emojis in the, <laughs> in the chat. Is that what those are? I That's what it is. <laughs> okay. And he says the lawn dude sprays uh, he cuts. That That is true. Okay. He's uh, just cutting it up in the chat here. <laughs> oh, Dee's talking about the DIY. She mm -hmm. agrees that the DIY is not always excited. Heather says her family is always glad to see bacon. I tell you what, I paid eleven forty nine for a pack of bacon one day, and I was like, "This is oh. crazy!" Oh I my gosh! A particular bacon that I liked and that I just wanted, but I thought, "Okay, I'm not buying that anymore." So I've cut yeah. back. So when I buy bacon, it'll be like the Kroger brand. I'm not getting the yeah. right black pepper bacon anymore. It's just the Kroger brand, and that's it. And the other thing too is that let's say someone says, "Okay, I'm going to reduce my meat consumption, and I'm going to eat more plant based." Well, be careful which recipes you look at because you may end up buying all these exotic ingredients that you don't need and never use. Ah, yes. And, and, and the recipe is really complicated and it took you two hours, whereas like you could have just made spaghetti and dumped some veggies in there and called it a day. So, so regardless of what you do, don't overcomplicate it. Okay. So Wendy, tell me, how can the guests um, connect with you? Oh, sure. So on my... Um, up on the screen when, after we take down Heather's comment, oh. um, that is my handle on Instagram and Twitter and mm -hmm. technically Facebook as well. So this one, yep. Mrs. Wendy Coop. Oh, right there. Mm -hmm. Oh, that one. So Mrs. Wendy Coop on Instagram and Twitter. Um, I am on Facebook as well. Uh, if you prefer to connect there, I answer all my DMS. So, <laughs> um, if you, wherever, wherever you want to connect with me is cool. Okay. So I almost forgot to give the, uh, to talk about the apron note and Mickey oh. Blue guys, if you could pull the, uh, from the comments, the person who is, um, going to be, um, the winner for that, if you could win that, I'll do that one. And then I will go ahead and let you guys see tonight's apron note. For those of you who are new, we give an apron note in every order that people uh, order from Apron Diva. We place an apron note in there. We've got 14 different notes and they're randomly selected. So tonight's apron note is you are the COO of your home. So own it by the yes. apron Diva with me. How does that resonate with you? And while you're in the chat, tell us how that resonates with you all. And then in the meantime, Blue Skies will pick who's the winner of this apron note. And then whoever wins it, 
needs to send me their mailing address at my email address, this and that with Denise at gmail.com. Don't put it in the chat because that's public. Email it to yeah. me so that it's private. And then Wendy, you as well, send me your mailing address. Uh, by email Yay. or you can text it to me and I will send you this apron note as well. But what does this apron note mean to you? That to me is empowerment because we look at some a title like COO and we think that's so far removed from what we do at home when in reality it takes a lot of discipline and organization and intellect to run and manage a household. It is not for the faint of heart. It is is not, it does not mean that you are, if you're a homemaker, you're not lazy. You're not sitting on the couch watching, you know, Roku TV all day. Like it's not like that. You know, there's things to manage and understanding that those skills are valuable. So phrasing it like a COO, I think that is wonderful and empowering. Oh, I like that. Thank you. Thank you. So look here, Debbie Joe wants to know, is there a lightning round? Ooh, lightning oh. round, pew, 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 um, pew. <laughs> um, hang on a second, let me see while you, um, so while they're congratulating D, so Eric wants to know what's an apron note. Well, an apron note is a card that I just showed that we put in all of our orders. And the apron note for today is you are the COO of your home, so own it. So D is going to get that. And so D, um, send me your email address. I mean, send me your mailing address via email. And let me just see if I can pull up some um, lightning round questions real quick. I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. So, moonlight or candlelight? Ooh, moonlight. Seafood or vegan? Vegan. Uh, Cokes or 7-Up? Cokes? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm an Uncola girl. I like 7-Up. Yeah. Um, <laughs> let's see. Um, Game of Thrones or... Wheel of Fortune. Wheel of Fortune. I, I could not get into Game of Thrones. I just couldn't do it. I tried. I tried. I gave it a shot. I made it like 15 minutes in. Winter is coming. And then that was it. Yeah, winter <laughs> is winter coming. Still coming. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And uh, Bridgerton or Downton Abbey? Oh, gosh. I've never seen either. So um, I'm going to go with Bridgerton. Oh my God, Bridgerton is amazing, and the new season is out, and then this season two is, it is just so nice. It is just That's so what I've nice. Heard. That's what I've heard. But I've got so many things on my list. Ah, yeah, I'm writing another book. I'm I've got another book to write. So like, oh, tell I us about that. Yeah. So the next book is Side Hustles for Women. Side oh. Hustles for Women. It is available now for pre order. Um, get it now while it's only 99 cents. Um, because after it goes live, I am going, I promise you that price will go up. Okay. So just a couple quick comments. Um, Michelle says having a garden in Florida is hard. And I guess because of the water consumption, maybe it's, um, that. I wouldn't know why. It's the water, it's the humidity, it's the frequent rain, but I'll tell you what, um, who said that about the, who was that about the garden in Florida? Check out Wild Floridian. Check out that channel on YouTube. Um, oh, yes. I, I know yeah. that channel. Yeah. So Wild Floridian is all about um, plants and gardens in Florida. So that should help you out. Okay. And then um, Heather said she kept her apron note, which was having a routine reduces the chaos. Yes, that yes. is so true. And then... Um, I think um, Dee was asking or commenting about she needs to post her apron. So those of you that purchased an apron, 
our first anniversary is coming up April 26th. So we're going to be celebrating. Right now we're celebrating Easter. And then we'll be celebrating our anniversary, uh, the first anniversary of Apron Diva and then Mother's Day. And Apron Diva's anniversary and Mother's Day kind of run together. So I'm asking people who purchased an apron to send me a picture of themselves, like, you know, one of their best pictures of themselves in their aprons. And then we're going to use some of them on our website for to celebrate. And then also I'm, I post some on the community tab. So Blue Skies has been getting the pictures ready. So D, yes, send me your picture. Yeah. And uh, let's see. I think Mickey saying you got to watch both of them, Bridgerton and Downton Abbey. <laughs> yeah, I, and my, I know my husband has seen Downton Abbey. Um, I just never got around to it. And Dee said she needs a side hustle because, yeah, she's taking oh. care of her mom full time. Yeah, D, we, we got we to talk. We got to talk. And then Yellowstone in 1883. I started watching 1883 and then I couldn't watch it anymore. It was just too intense. Guys, right now, I just can't take in anything that's too intense. Mm -hmm. And I watched the first episode and I just saw too many bad things happening. I thought, OK, I just I just can't I just can't take it in. Yeah, yeah. My husband wanted me to watch this movie with him. It was about, it was a, a, a cowboy movie, you know, back, a Western, I should say. And it was about mostly black people, which black Was people, it The Harder They Fall? That was it. Yeah, and I still haven't finished it. <laughs> I watched that and I just from the opener, I'm like, honey, I don't think I can watch this. He's like, oh, it'll be fine. He's, this is just, you know, whatever. And after mm -hmm. that first scene, I knew something bad was going to happen. I sobbed for 20 minutes. We ended up watching episodes of The Good Witch because he was like, okay, whatever you want to watch, just stop crying. I, I just can't watch anything that's too intense right now. So there's that. Yeah, that's a pretty Danita, intense just for them. Take a picture of all the ones you bought, Danita, of you in each one of them, all dialed up in your favorite apron, and then we're going to use them on our site. So yes. Whichever one you like best or send me a couple. So, okay. So, Wendy, I've kept you for, an, oh my God, an hour and 15 minutes. I didn't intend to keep you that long. Eric is probably like, when are they going to stop? So, thank you so much for joining <laughs> us. So, I'm glad you told where people can um, find you at next. Yes. And your and new book coming out, The Side Hustle for Women. Looking forward to that. Yes. Um, like I said, definitely get in on this price because it will not last. Right. And right now, the Kindle version of the, um, well, there's two versions for the uh, five steps, the, the women's uh, budget, five steps to getting your act together. There's a Kindle uh, price and there's also a paperback price too. So check those out as well. Mm -hmm. And um, people saying this time went by fast. Yes, it did. Wendy, I just got yeah, so comfortable chatting with you. So thank you so much. So people, we're going to wrap it up. Let me invite you guys to be sure and remember that the Dawn is on sale for Easter at 10% off. So be sure and check it out while the sale is still on. And um, also be sure to check out my last video, which had to do with spring cleaning or not. So be sure and check that one out as well. And then our question of the day is what steps are you going to take to get your financial act together? Tell mm. me in the chat or leave me a comment. So again, what steps are you going to take to get your financial act together? Inquiring minds want to know, you know what? I probably shouldn't say that. You know what? I say that all the time, but I realize <laughs> I'm probably trademarked. I probably shouldn't say that. I don't know. It just it's like with things that make you go, hmm. <laughs> yeah, know, everyone says that. Exactly. But I like to ask that. But you're being thanked for um the information that you gave that was so helpful. My and, pleasure. Um, yes. So thank you so much. And just thank you again. And um Heather just got your book for 99 cents on Kindle. Yay! So hooray. So yeah, people, you can get have, you can get Wendy's book right now on Kindle for 99 cents, or you can buy the uh, paperback version for a little bit more. So whichever way you like to read is how I suggest you get it. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to say goodbye, and I'll talk to Wendy in the green room. So bye, folks. We'll see you next okay. week at 745 Eastern Standard Time. Later, Gators.